What is going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders. I am very grateful to have your attention, at least for the next 15 minutes of this episode. Forward Thinking Founders is a podcast where I interview pre-seed and seed stage founders about their products, what they want to build into the world, and why. We dive into how they spend their time, what's their vision, what's the origin of stories, all these things, so you can learn all about what's coming tomorrow. Because these companies haven't hit critical scale yet. Most of them haven't hit product market fit. These are just early stage companies. And the big question is, what can this be? And in this podcast, we bring that out. So with that, I really hope you enjoy your time listening to today's episode. And I've already done 200 plus. So if you like this one, listen to some of the other ones, like with Amadi Kuhn, Austin Allred, Leah Culver. We have great interviews. So check it out. Enjoy the repository. And for now, let's get into today's episode. Here we go. All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Tyson Kanofsky, who's a co-founder of AutoCloud. Welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, excited to have you on. I'm looking forward to learning more about what you're working on. For people that haven't heard of your company before, what are you working on? What is AutoCloud? So AutoCloud does multi-cloud compliance, security, billing, and drift detection for companies running workloads on AWS, Azure, GCP, and Kubernetes. Essentially, what our platform does is we create regular database snapshots of your multi-account, multi-cloud footprint, so that cloud engineers and their managers can get insights about their environment, not just now, but at any point in time throughout the history of their environment's existence. So walk me through a little bit about the origin of story here. Like, why did you decide to work on this and, and um, of, of all the problems to solve? Um, yeah, why, why, why pick this one? Why pick such a difficult one? I know. Um, so I guess this takes us back to 2015 when I started my first company. A company was called Lambda, and we were a cloud migration company. We also did a little bit of custom app development. But what we would do is we go into large organizations banks, other financial institutions, and help them figure out how to go from on-prem infrastructure to having workloads that are running on the cloud. And over and over again in these organizations, we saw a lack of understanding, a lack of expertise, best practices not being utilized and leveraged, whether that be because they just didn't understand how to do this internally, or the cloud ecosystem was changing so rapidly that it's just really hard to stay up to date. So ended up, uh, that company ended up being acquired, Lambda got acquired by another management consultancy here in Chicago, where I currently reside, and I became their head of technology. And same thing, we did a lot of projects with very big enterprise that had complex cloud infrastructure, multi-cloud infrastructure. And after doing this manual process of going in, assessing environments, building new components over and over again, we thought to ourselves, there has to be a better way to allow anybody operating on the cloud or multiple clouds at once to have a holistic sense of operations and a better understanding of how to build excellently on cloud providers. And that's kind of how AutoCloud was born. The official start of the company was um, one of my co-founders, Christopher Coding and I were down in Argentina and we were trying to climb Mount Aconcagua, which is the tallest mountain outside of Asia. Um, we, had, we, we failed, we got stuck in a tent for a few days because there's a bad snowstorm. And in the tents, deprived of oxygen at about 16,000 feet, we decided that we were going to quit our jobs and start AutoCloud to solve these problems that we'd seen over and over again in the industry. Wow. Well, as a, as a uh, someone that loves hiking in Colorado 14ers, I could totally take this in like a separate direction, right? Of like, <laughs> why were you on that? I might have one question later on about that. But no, sure. I appreciate you, you sharing all of that. So a few questions, a little more in the weeds of it. Like, when you're telling, you know, potential customers or people that, you know, you could work with about, um, about this, do they generally, um, I guess, does your ideal customer already understand this whole world or do you kind of have to do some education on like, on, on, you know, what you do? The reason I ask is like, I'm a non-technical person, but I'm technical for a non-technical person. So I understand, I can understand kind of what you're doing, but like, I don't understand the nuts and bolts, right? So do your customers generally like understand the nuts and bolts or do you kind of, you know, walk them through how this all works? I'm curious what the dynamic is there. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. So most of our customers are pretty technical by nature. These are technical executives, CIOs, CTOs. These are the buyers, people that are in charge of engineering teams. And for them, they've done this stuff for a long time. So they understand the tenants of cloud and 
the reasons for needing software like AutoCloud. Um, there's a little bit of education when it comes to data aggregation. So one of the interesting things that we're doing with AutoCloud is we're building out the API for everything cloud, a single API that you can use to query all of your Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and later on SaaS data together in a single place. And that's not really been done to date in the way that we're doing it using a GraphQL API endpoint that's all type safe. I won't get too technical, but there's some interesting technical nuance there to how we're doing this. So we find that from an overall premise perspective, people typically understand what we're doing. And then with the new innovative, innovative technology components we're building, there is a little bit of that customer education that we have to do. And we typically do that through just a handful of slides, scenarios, um, and things that these people are, are familiar with. And, you know, as you mentioned, when talking about the origin story, like this isn't your first go around at like, you know, company building, right? So, so as you're, as you're doing this, how do you spend your time? And now that you've kind of already done this once and you, you, you were, you know, first time founder now doing it again, um, do you feel like you are more like, you know, what to spend your time on now more than you did before? Is it still the same? Cause it might be like a different sector. Like, how do you think about your, your day and, and where, where you spend your time? It's an interesting question. What we're doing now is essentially productizing the offering of the first company that I had. And I'd love to give you an answer that says I'm great at time management. I'm on top of my stuff and I'm able to manage everything efficiently. But the truth is that at an early stage startup, even a well-funded team of 17, like we are, there's still a lot of context switching, wearing hats and doing different things on different days. But that said, there is a typical structure and there are things that I try and focus on more. Um, a lot of my job historically up until say the last month has been focused on architecture, engineering, system design, and making sure that all the technical components are good to go there. Luckily, we have such a strong and wonderful technical team that I've been able to offload some of that work. So really what I'm focused on today is sales, account management, business development in general. Um, there is some kind of architecture and technical components there. But for the most part, I'm able to focus on those more customer facing activities. And I think that as we look forward to the future, I'd like to be less involved in say code reviews, any architecture discussions, the daily standups as they pertain to product specific elements and more focus on those higher level strategic aspects. And I mean, it's a, it's a perfect segue when you, when you say like looking into the future, what you want to spend more time on, what you just want to spend less time on. So I'm curious if you, if you were going to like zoom out, you know, even farther, even like a decade or two, like, what do you see as the big vision um, for AutoCloud? Or in other words, like in, in five, 10, 15 years, what is this going to look like and what direction are you rowing in? That's fascinating to think about. I think that, you know, it's hard to picture a year from now, let alone five and 10, but if I had to kind of put myself out there. What we're really doing with AutoCloud is we're building the GraphQL API for everything, allowing anybody that works on the cloud to know anything, any kind of insight about any sort of data that they have and aggregating that data together in a central place. So I can see us attempting, I mean, it's what we're doing to build the data backbone for all cloud and SaaS data in a single place, allowing you to really, really quickly query and search that data in a way that's just not possible today. Today, there's so many different disparate sources and silos and authentication mechanisms and ways that you have to get this data. That's a very painful process. Say that you're a company and you're running workloads on AWS in Azure, right? You have to be an expert in both AWS and Azure. You have to use different APIs. You're using different third-party tools. Our grand vision is to be the tool that builds the data backbone that all other cloud and SaaS tools use to be able to access their data. And that's kind of where we're in the direction that we're headed. In order to do that, I mean, you'll need some help, right? It takes a village to make a startup work and scale. So my question for you is, how can the forward-thinking founders community help? I mean, are you hiring, raising money, looking for customers, you know, partners? You know, how, how can we assist? Absolutely. So um, we, were, we closed our, our seed round a few months ago. We did a $4 million round from some amazing investors. We couldn't be happier with the folks that we have on board. They've been incredibly supportive. And they've just made our lives a whole lot easier with everything from connections to help with hiring and everything related to the business. I think that the ask from the forward thinking founders community would be if you are an IT professional or you know IT professionals that are running workloads on AWS, Azure, GCP, or Kubernetes, and you're looking for a centralized way 
to have better insights about security, billing, compliance, asset inventories, drift detection, basically the whole holistic life cycle of cloud operations, then check out AutoCloud. You can go sign up for free. We have a very generous um, free plan that allows for up to 2,500 assets under management, an asset being like a database or a virtual machine, no credit card required. Um, and we have a pretty novel, interesting 3D visualization paradigm for quickly surfacing insights. So we're looking to obviously enhance our customer acquisition. If anybody knows of anybody that could be interested in AutoCloud, or you think it could be applicable to your own company, then let us know. Happy to help you get started. You can email me at tyson at autocloud.dev, or you can sign up directly through autocloud.dev. And if you're a company that's a little bit larger and that needs a little bit more of an asset count or some premium features, email me, happy to get you set up for free. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I have one last question that I usually don't ask, but I have to, because it's like in my realm of interest. Like you said, this whole thing started, you know, on a mountain, right? Like I'm curious, um, just to finish this thing off, why were you hiking such a large mountain? That, like, like that's like, that's crazy. Um, but obviously that, that's where, you know, I feel like crazy, crazy things, when you do crazy things, crazy outcomes happen in the best ways. So I'm just curious, like, what was your inspiration for uh, getting on the mountain? <laughs> so I climbed, I guess I hiked Kilimanjaro back in gosh, 2014. And it was one of the most fun things I've ever done. I met friends that were, that joined our group that are good pals to this day. And I had such a good time going and experiencing the diverse ecosystems on every layer up the mountain from tropical rainforest to glaciers at the top. And I'm from South Africa. I was born in Johannesburg, which is a pretty high city. I've always been pretty good at altitude. And I've always been attracted to the outdoors and, and mountains. So we decided to try and climb Aconcagua in an attempt to one day begin to climb some more serious peaks, the 8,000 meters, um, the stuff that Nims uh, is into if you're, if you're up to date with, with what he's doing. So Aconcagua was our first real, I guess, big mountain training attempt to see how we, me and my friends would function at altitude in order to go tackle some more serious climbs. Um, obviously with COVID, things got put on hold but looking forward to getting back into some more big mountain climbing next year, hopefully. That's awesome. I love that. Um, well, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and sharing about what you're working on and your interest in mountaineering. I wish you the best of luck building this out. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, Matt. Thanks so much.